and welcome to the Glacially Musical Podcast. It is beer, metal, swearing, and a side of vinyl. I, of course, am Nick Cameron, who is still sick and leaky and gross, joined by my good friend, the man who always preens his feathers, Cockatoo Chakas. How are we doing today, buddy? I'm all right. How are you doing, man? I am good. I'm tired. Yesterday at work was just like the dumbest day. I've ever had in my life. Uh, I would send emails saying, I know it is not X. And then I would get a phone call back saying, Nick, it's not X. Well, you know, there's a fucking email you could have read. Beer metal swearing, people. Uh, I'm going to beer check because fuck this. It has been a week. I I don't know if that poor, that pop could be heard at all, but I'm going to get this sugar up. Pop was good. Pop was good. This is, so I'm at Trader Joe's last week, and I actually spent the most money at Trader Joe's I'd ever spent in my life, $75, because I brought my family with me. Uh, apparently, they can find ways to spend some fucking money. And uh, I'm like, then I spent some money, because there's this lady in line, and she's like talking, and I'm not paying attention. She's talking to me. I'm looking at her cart, and it says, and I see beer, and I'm like, I don't know that beer. The beer is Cookie Butter Beer. It is a Speculous Cookie Butter Beer Imperial Golden Ale with toasted coconut, vanilla, and natural flavors. I know I am usually the kind of person that drinks a beer that just hurts to drink because it makes me feel like a big man. But uh, she, I asked her, you know, what is that? And she says, you ever had those cookies on the airplane? I'm like, yeah, she's like, it tastes like that, but beer. And I went, okay, I'll be right back. And I actually, I didn't even say that. I just walked away as she was saying that. And my wife was just laughing because she knew what I was doing. And I grabbed it. It was $15 for four. And I came back and I put it on there and we were a little bit broke. And I'm like, this is irresponsible. So I took the four back and I came back with two because that's responsible. It's also 9.5% ABV which is ridiculous and it's sweet and delicious and cheers cheers to you sir uh yeah uh tj's is infamous for being like a snack hole you go in there for actual food and you come out with a lot of snacks and not too much food i am also due for a trader joe's run uh myself and they make those cookies in the same style of the beer so that's a one to grow on. It's not quite their signature cookie, which is the Joe's O's, right? The non- Right, right, right. right. Yeah, my mother-in-law, I gotta buy those for her every week. Right. Um, but anywho, yeah, so uh, pretty cool. I have a beer I have never had before today. Mm-hmm. I Even though I have the brand a lot and you've had, I've had it here on the show. So this is a Fort Point Beer Brewing Company from San Francisco. Strawberry Darling Berliner Wiest with strawberries. Now, I don't like fruity or hazy What beers. the hell is wrong with us this week? What is where you're just going against the grain? I do love strawberries. It's actually my second favorite fruit. So we're going to rock with this bad boy and see what happens. Oh, um, just for the record, you can go ahead, Pop. You can get that Biscoff stuff, the Biscoff cookies. You mm-hmm. can get it in a spread. And then spend an entire afternoon regretting all your choices when you put it on Nutter Butters. <clears throat> oh, shit. Or, so, not Nutter Butters. I'm sorry, Nilla Wafers. Put it on Nilla Wafers. I mean, Nutter Butters also sounded acceptable. That's a bit much for me. Uh, I'm hypoglycemic, as I like to mention, so I can get sympathy, which I don't get. I did the pour kind of off screen. Uh, no, it's in a my, good in pour. My, pour. In my Lost Coast Brewing glass. Cheers to you, sir. We'll see if I like this. I usually love every beer this brand does so we're gonna we're just gonna go with it oh merciless god i gotta go to trader joe's tomorrow and get eight more of these yeah oh maybe that's a, a maybe an error. <laughs> <laughs> oh keith he's making give her, you ever eat the booty and it tastes like a burnt penny that's what this tastes like a burnt penny um, wow, we are going. Okay, I'm sorry, but just for the record, if you are new, thank you very much. We are off the rails already because crazy trains, snort the cocaine, whatever. I don't care. Um, so here's how this goes: greetings, business, beer check, shirt check, vinyl check coming soon. Meat of the matter. This week we are joined by an amazing guitar player 
with a ridiculous email address. We'll get to that later. Uh, we won't on air. Uh, Richie Randall of Gravehoffer from Springfield, Missouri. Great guitarist, great band. And we'll we'll discuss all their business time later. In the meantime, it's time for a vinyl check. Do you want to go or you want me to go? You go. I got a pair this week. I got a good pair, I think. Went to the antique mall. Was feeling froggy, so I jumped. Came across Genesis selling England by the pound. Uh, have not. I have played it once. It's also been cleaned. PS4 controller on the floor. Where that garbage goes. I'm just kidding. Uh, you know, plain old bland record. Nothing interesting. It's a 1970s record. This is largely considered by people who know more about Genesis than I do, though I'm trying to be one of their greatest records. I got it for. I don't even remember. It was less than 10 bucks. So happy to pick that up. Then while getting uh, the wife's car fixed. Now, if you're married, like records, and you have to get your wife's car fixed on the frequent, choose you a record, or I'm sorry, choose you a, an auto mechanic that is in the same plaza as a bar and grill and a record store. Because then you know what? When you come home with Welcome to My Nightmare by Alice Cooper. Original pressing, all that good stuff. 15 bucks. Nobody's going to bitch because, oh, I just spent four hours getting your stupid gas guzzler fixed. I drive an electric, so I can say that. I have not spun this one yet, and it's in amazing shape after a good whack on the cleaner. Looks like it's going to sound like heaven. That's incredible. I, we, I'm hopeful we will do a Cooper run at some point, but uh, just to put you on the spot, if you had to pick one bullet to your, you know, gun to your head, uh, welcome to my nightmare or billion dollar babies, which record? I have not choose? heard either one from start to finish. Oh shit. Okay. Then no, we'll right. Scratch that shit. Uh, and maybe mm -hmm. we'll move that up the imaginary list higher. Maybe we should start writing these things down. I mean, I kind of have a running list that I keep. I do not. I am. Not. Oh, anyway, we what, probably what? should share a doc. Um, so vinyl check for me, unless you have more. No, I'm good. I'm done this week. Okay. I have a couple this week. I'm going to reach behind me. And uh, the first one is a good old gimme metal record, Electric Wizard. This is the second Electric Wizard Ooh. record, Come My Fanatics on double vinyl. Uh, and it's a fancy one too. Uh, you know, nice job again. Big fan here of Gimme Metal and the Gimme Metal Vinyl Subscription Clubs. About twenty six bucks a month, including shipping. And uh, none of them have ever sucked. They're all pretty great. Uh, but let's just. I thought I had one pulled out already, but it looks like I don't. But it did come. It's on a two LP. It comes in the paper with the mylar inside, which I'm a fan of. Normalize the mylar, as Nick likes to say. And then as we gently remove the vinyl from the sleeve here's this gorgeous splatter oh appreciate it in the light here i'll hold it up to the light a little bit you can see the reflection of my my light there but nice looking and uh it's badass i've already listened to it i listened to a lot of doom metal on my birthday my birthday was last weekend um i am now 50 years old and i don't know how i feel about it to be real um the second final this week no commentary at all from nick uh none i'm pushing it so what am i gonna say yeah the the second vinyl is one i had been waiting for that i ordered earlier in the year this is the comeback album from crossover thrash punks the boneless ones uh not only is this a bay area staple of skate punk the band now features craig le cicero of forbidden and dress the dead and chris contos of you know, Machine Head and a bunch of other bands. So I thought you were going to say they now feature boners. They, I mean, they feature when they play, you get a boner because they're that good. Well, um, fair enough. And then I think I have already pulled out the, there's a little, it's weird. The, the boneless ones LP came in a vinyl. It was like hard to get out of the sleeve. So I think I'm going to completely swap out the sleeve. This is also on a fancy splatter. Mm -hmm. That's not the right one. It's here somewhere. Wait, 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 wait. I have it out here. Here we go. This is on kind of bluish. I thought I was getting a red. This is like a very weird deep blue. Can you tell? A it's little blue black. It's not coming out well. It's not coming out too well here. Sorry, but it is kind of a dark blue black. Um, it looks better in person than on camera. But uh, that is my two vinyls for this week. Very excited at the collection. 
continues to grow. I managed to not go to the record store on my birthday. And the only things that are showing up are things I've already bought that haven't shown up yet. So. Well, you want to see a guy with two thumbs going to the record store tomorrow. That a guy. I am. Uh, I have not been to a uh, music record shop in some time. So I'm going to music record shop tomorrow because awesome. my wife's out of town and she can't tell me no. Yo. Unless she texts me saying, Nick, don't go to the record store. But she's not. Uh, let's see. Uh, I have a couple of news items, some Kiss news items, some Gene mm. Simmons news items. Shirt check too, or then? Oh, I'm sorry. Shirt check. I'm rocking my Deadpool. I actually mm. been watching uh, Welcome to Wrexham, which has been a fantastic documentary series on Ryan Reynolds and Rob McElhaney purchasing a fifth division Welsh soccer team and how they're trying to make it better and be amazing. And they've just made it worse. So good on them. Insane. Um, yeah, big fan of uh, the pool. We're looking forward to Deadpool coming into the MCU. Oh, very much so. I stayed up all night last night, not sleeping and watching Andor. So I won't spoil it for you, but so far it's awesome. Wife asked me, are we uh, watching it or are we waiting? I'm like, I'm waiting for you to come home. I love oh, that's, you. That's kind. Uh, I am wearing my uh, my Witch Crier band shirt, Killer Band. You should all be checking out if you like the Stoner Dooms. Uh, this, I don't know. I'm uh, I'm okay. I think, I, mean, I think it's like Satan on the cover here. I, Satan and some mountains and yada 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 um so that's the shirt check and now for your news if you like go ahead yeah i got a couple of gene simmons news items the first one has come out this week that gene simmons has no friends so what i love about the kiss by autobiographies is they all slam each other and as time goes on uh they all admit yeah you know what paul said about me was true ace has said about gene he has no friends for years Oh my God, Keefe is drinking that beer and he's a trooper and I appreciate that. And he has a problem because he's still drinking it. You should dump it out and get something good. But he's not gonna because he's a he's a trooper. And it's getting up is hard when you're old like us. But I find it interesting that Gene Simmons has now admitted he has no friends. It's all about money. And to me, I've always felt like Gene Simmons only sees human beings as how much money he can earn from them. And which is a very, in my humble opinion, a very sad way to live because, you know, obviously we all want to be comfortable. We all want to do well, but there's a lot more to this world than money and he does not get it. So good luck with that. Have another Gene Simmons news article. Gene Simmons, a man who has said anyone who drinks is a loser and will die. And I hate you and you're wasting your money and time has come out with money bag vodka and he has assured us it is triple dis- i'm sorry 10 times distilled and will taste delicious how he would know good question but you know like i said about gene simmons he only sees human beings as a vessel to send him money here's a great example also when he uh started hyping a marijuana company So remember next week when you see Gene Simmons talking about what uh, losers Ace and Peter were for numbing themselves with alcohol next week and whatever interview he's in, uh, that you can also buy a premium vodka from him. So you can numb yourself and be a loser like Ace and Peter. Right. And Paul apparently has like one of the finest collections of wine in the world by any individual person. So Gene is the hypocrisy. I feel kind of, I not, should not feel sad for him, but I, for a person with like almost half a billion dollars, but I kind of feel sad for him because like even his wife doesn't count as a best friend. That's sad. Like, doesn't his <laughs> wife count as a friend? Like she's, isn't she, she at least, if you have no one else, shouldn't your wife and children be in your friends? Like, I guess not. Um, I have a know. lot of questions and I, I, no, I, I genuinely feel bad for him to have so much. And to emotionally have so little. Yeah. Um, I'm going to go with me. The... That's all I got this week. Yeah, yeah. Uh, there's a many, a plethora of things to discuss, but I'll just keep it to the one this week, which is, I, I think this is pretty great. Ozzy Osbourne has the number one record in the world right now. Like, unbelievably. His highest charting album ever for patient number nine. Don't know if you've heard it yet. Um, I have not, and I will. I, I, I will hear it soon. And... I'm really excited 
excited to hear this one. He talked about how much better it was than 13 and how he wished he had some of those songs. Well, I don't know back. why he's bashing 13. He did an Have you heard 13? Like 13. Yeah, but like he shouldn't be. It is there, like at the. <clears throat> I, I'm he's allowed to have his opinion and he's allowed to express his opinion. And yes, the album was, you know, mostly written, was not written as a band, which is what his point is. Uh, this record was not written as a band. This record was written for him, just like in the old days. So, uh, you know, I don't know. Well, that's when he, he does his best work. I guess he, he, I don't know. I, I think, you know, let, if you ever hope to have anything positive, with Black Sabbath, with with Iomi again, you know, you keep it. Leave the commentary out. Um, but he you has know, the number one record in the world. Choice. He has the number one record in America. He has like the number three record in England. He's got a top ten record in fifteen countries. The highest charting record of his entire solo career, which I think, again, at this point, that's amazing. What whatever you feel about this record, I actually think is pretty good. I liked Ordinary Man quite a lot, and I think this is a better record, actually, not just because it's got so many, the star power is nice, but, like, actually the songs are better here. And, um, you know, regardless of how I feel about this record, regardless of how I feel about Simple Man, I love the fact that Ozzy is still making records. And that is something that many of the elder statesmen are completely fine being heritage acts. And I think once you become a heritage act, you should stop. Because if you don't have a fire to write and to express, you're just you're just cashing checks. My humble opinion, you know. Yeah. yeah. Can I, I think you said just, simple man, but you mean ordinary man. Um, well, you know, I, hey, my mama told me when I was young. I don't want Ozzy to cover Leonard Skinner ever. Um, at least he's do. not doing bad covers. I mean, he's got a few bad covers out there Ozzy I like want to hear Ozzy Osbourne cover 38 special by Leonard Skinner I said um, it I did it okay and considering note, what he said about America and guns well yeah him covering Leonard Skinner's anti-gun song makes perfect sense yeah yeah um yeah I got nothing else um it's, it's, nothing there's else a lot really going on but in there's a lot going on, but in terms of what's like relative to us, uh, you know, I always try to bring up, you know, whenever there's like a news item relative to a band we've covered, I try to go with that one, but there's not a lot going on right now. So I think. Uh, um, well, Nick Mason, as you pointed out to me earlier, oh, yeah. has announced more dates. None, well, the, even none close to here, unfortunately. Yeah, officially uh, it's, the re is... it's the rebooked tour of Nick, which is it. So like they. I'm just confused. So, like, again, you had tickets and they canceled them and refunded you. Correct. They didn't announce this until the other day. The tour is next week, basically. They're flying to America. So, like, I'm confused. Like, Dave, you already had a ticket. Did you know this show was coming up and I somehow this got by me? Or I would guess that it like... all depends upon your venue. Yeah. Um, they I mean, the, the, big, the venue they were playing in St. Louis is one of the big venues. And if they're they they book that place out a year in advance. Yeah, I think so it's they less would have looked dates. at it. Yeah, it is less dates. But I mean, Nick is seventy eight. Roger Waters has uh, also announced some more. Um, what is it? Oh, this is not a drill. European tour dates. He's now calling it his first farewell tour, which I think is funny. Uh, Iron Maiden is continuing the Legacy of the Beast tour. And then we'll probably get a Senjutsu tour next year, which I hopefully, hopefully they come to town. And if not, regardless, I will buy the live album they release because you know they're going to. Um, trying to think, no body count news that I'm aware of, no Metallica news of any significant, oh, Helping Hand concert is coming. Uh, we should be right on the cusp of the next vinyl, uh, Metallica Vinyl Club release. Uh, Pink Floyd Animals 2018 remix has come out. No spoilers. We will get to that in two weeks from today. And that's all I got in terms of random, rando stuff. All righty then. Um, so I think at this point, unless there's anything else, any other minutiae you want to share, not that it would be minutiae from you, but just any, any other uh, stuff going on in the world, we can bring our guest in. Uh, Keith, you just said that I've never... Uh, brief, which is true. 
I will say this. I mean, I'm this. never brief, so. We're, yeah, we're bad at this. We cannot self-edit. Uh, I will say this and only this. My darling wife ended up getting me entrance to a private event at St. Louis's new soccer stadium. So I was able to take a tour of the soccer stadium, enjoy hors d'oeuvres, including tuna poke on a crab rangoon uh, wrapper, which is the most delicious thing I have ever had in my life now. Uh, also got to drink a beer while sitting on the team bench which is just an amazing, ridiculous thing. Did not get to go into the bowels, but I got to see a brand new stadium and it is absolutely beautiful. And I cannot wait for the MLS to start here in St. Louis. Now I'll shut up. Maybe. I have no, I mean, I have nothing that cool to add. Um, you know, I married well, I married well. You married up. It's a good job. Oh, completely married up. Marry up. Oh. And that's why uh, she called you lady. Can you see that? Oh, you can't nope. see it. Uh, I burned myself severely cooking on Sunday. Yo. Yeah, so I haven't nice. cooked since then. Uh, it was a surprise. Anyway, I'm going to stop. Bring Rich, Bring Richie in. Bring Richie in. All righty. We'll bring him in. Hang on. And we are back. I have more to say about ridiculous shit that has happened that doesn't involve Richie, who might or might not be here. You're going to have to wait. Uh, the kid and I were watching... This beat goes hard by Will I Am, not for the first time, but for the second time, because the song is absolute garbage. So she said, Dad, I want to hear more songs about trash. So I played two kiss songs in a row. You make me rock hard, and who wants to be lonely? And then I was late because then we had to chase that with D Lights, Groove is in the Heart. Anyway, so I'm going to stop talking about that business. This week, we are joined by a man who said to himself, this death metal is brutal and awesome, and the blast beats and the solos are great, but why is nobody dancing? So he threw in some ABBA, because fuck it. And we're joined by Springfield, Missouri's finest guitar player that I'm aware of. I do only know one. It is Richie Randall of Gravehopper. Thank you for joining us. Say something. Hey, man. Thanks for having me. And it's Joplin, Missouri, by the way. Uh, you know what? I'm not going to be provincial. <laughs> I'm just going to apologize. That's I all right. <laughs> no, no, I'm from all look. Good. I'm from St. Louis. Everybody else right, is. Yeah. Yeah. You know. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> no, it's all good. No worries. Thank um, you for being here. So, yeah. Greatly appreciate it. So tell me. Hey, uh, thanks for having me. What in the world is Grave Huffer? Well, initially it started out as just a cool sounding name. And um, now we have a song called Grave Huffer. And so that's kind of where, it's, where it stands. But it, I mean, it was just one of those things where a friend of ours was actually going to name his band that. And we're like, oh, we have uh, a Metallica that's situation not fit your now. Own. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. We're like, uh, that's not going to fit your rockabilly band, you know? And well, he never I'm... even got the band going. I am sorry. You what's, cannot what's say that. that. When I'm taking a drink, Grave Huffer Rock. No. <laughs> right, right. Do yeah, that I'm again. Like, no and way, I, look, do that again. And I'm not even going to listen when you talk. Okay. <laughs> so, yeah, that, yeah, Grave Huffer is not going to be good for your rockabilly band. I mean, that's just not going to work, you know? I mean, and you know, you're not going to do, you're not even going to start the band. And you never did. And so we're like, yoink. So we, we took the name and uh, we just give him a free t-shirt every once in a while. So that's, that's kind of how it worked out. He's luckier than me. I got to pay for my t-shirts. <laughs> give the away band Huffer, names. Uh, the Grey Huffer uh, t-shirt game is on point, Richie. Uh, you know, great to have and you. Thanks, here. man. Great to have you here, man. Thanks, uh, you man. Know, we've circled each other's paths for many years all the the blogosphere and the metal scene right um just if you want to give like a quick two minute summation about the band how it formed and if a person didn't know who you were and you wanted to sell them on your band what would you tell them or what would you compare your band to that's actually what i was asking yeah. for but apparently i did it poorly <laughs> yeah yeah uh, i mean we've been around since like 2008 we do punk metal kind of mashup hybrid whatever i mean we just call ourselves extreme music 
Uh, me and the bass player Mike have been in and out of bands together since like 1997. So we've been doing it a long time. Got got that chemistry, and we we write all the stuff pretty much. But singers and drummers are kind of an issue. But um, but yeah, I mean we're uh, we're working on our well completed our fourth record, and it, we just turned it into the label about a month ago, Black Doomba Records, and um, they're gonna put it out sometime early next year. Um, we play shows probably I'd say five or six times a month. You play the my absolute usually do like favorite, this weekend. You you play my absolute favorite pizza place, Blackthorn Pub. However, never the one near my house. Uh, yeah, man. Yeah, just, right. Just, I'm just saying they've got <laughs> yeah, other Black locations. Shit, man. <laughs> no, I think it's a different one, but <laughs> no. Nah, yeah, it, it's, a... it's the same. Yeah, it actually is yeah. the same. We've got one in Columbia, one in uh, Joplin, and they've got one in St. Louis. I used to walk really? past the one in St. Louis every day to get to the 70 grand bus to go to work. Really? Interesting. I did not Chicago know that. style pizza, punk rock, graffiti. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Told it's you. an it's it's an Irish Irish bar. I get or the one here is is an Irish Everything's bar. Irish. Yeah, I know, right? <laughs> so yeah, I mean, you know, bands love playing there because they get fed and they get booze and you know the, the door pays well. And so and yeah, that's always good. is amazing. The, the pizza is very amazing. Uh, actually, this, our old singer is the cook there. <laughs> <laughs> so every time we play there, he'll get up on stage with us and do a song and for nice. good old time's sake. Yeah, it, it's cool. But yeah, man, uh, we're excited about a new record coming out. What's that, different about this record from the last one? The last one was, because well, I, I was actually chatting with you on Facebook when I yeah. listened to it, because I don't. I, I, I and I don't mean this as an insult, but I genuinely don't remember why I bought it. Um, oh, necro necro eclosion. Yeah, I, I just the, remember the, buying it, and I, I yeah. didn't review it, and that was where at uh-huh. that time I was getting most of my records. What I reviewed, so I didn't yeah, review yeah. it. It wasn't sent to me. I just I, I just remember buying it, listening to it, going, "Oh my god, this is odd and very cool in a very unique right. way." Because you know we're now at the point in extreme metal where not only is ripping off a band accepted, cloning a band is accepted and cloning their mm. art is accepted. Right. Gruesome looking at you. Great records. But I mean, come on, we all know what you're doing. Right. I mean, for yeah. Gruesome, I will give Gus an apology, which is like, that's the point. Like the entire point is he was in death as a touring musician. And so like his whole Oh, thing, oh I did not know Gus that. Rios is yeah. the drummer and guitar player on record of of gruesome he's also done he did the liquid death death metal album <laughs> all, mm. all with lyrics about you know the in, the insults online toward the brand so like i give him a pass because like the idea of gruesome and matt harvey is like you know the best imitator of chuck out there so i'll give them a pass not only do i give them a pass mm. but i give them my money yeah Right. So I, yeah. I, obviously, I'm not like harbor harboring these amazing, awful feelings because it's like, oh, new record. Here's twenty dollars. Send me a purple one. Yeah. Right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, and, and vinyl's fun, and you know, we we're gonna do this new record on vinyl, but no necro eclosion, like what you were talking about. You know, I was like, yeah, that's cool. You bought it, and um, like you say, it is kind of odd. We get that a lot. You know, you're like, man, you guys just do a throw a lot of stuff in the the mixing bowl, you know. And um, I think it just we're older, and we've listened to so much music, and it just kind of comes out that way. But we're not like we're not really. It's organic. It's not. Well, um, and that's one of the things about thought. That's one of the Go things ahead. about listening to extreme metal that drives me insane. Mm-hmm. I'm at work yeah. six months ago, right? And yeah. I don't remember how she comes up, but I meant like, oh yeah, I love Casey Musgraves. What is, I do. I love Casey Musgraves. I have yeah. all four of her albums or do Christmas records. You know, w- you know, the Christmas season does not start in this house until we spin her Christmas records. That is like, yeah. And then, and then John Denver and the Muppets. But, <laughs> but yeah. one of my coworkers is like, Nick, I cannot believe you listen to Casey Musgraves. I'm like, why? Well, all that crazy stuff you listen to? Well, you know what? Sometimes I'm sick. Sometimes I'm sad. Maybe I want to hear the blues. You know, would you believe right. that I listen to ladies with an acoustic guitar too? Oh my God. I can listen to more right. than one thing. And right, we yeah. all do. If you listen to the best metal, it's mm. obvious those people are not just listening to Morbid Angel. 
Right, exactly. And like, dude, we listen to everything from Philip Glass to Morbid Angel. You know, I mean, it's it's just we all listen to Morbid Angel. I mean, come on, yeah, we all do? right, exactly. You know, I mean, not the one about the the Destructor book. I mean, not not that one. <laughs> not not the eye record but yeah no <laughs> yeah um it's it's weird you know i mean and we like we just throw it all out there and i don't know it to we just get bored playing the same kind of tempos and riffs and but you know we still like to keep it heavy and interesting but we you know we we try to throw some new wrinkles in there and this new album is definitely no dif- no different you know i mean there's a 22 minute song on it so there you go Oh, so now we're going to get some death metal rush. I'm yeah. here for that. I, You know, back in the day when I was in a band, <laughs> my bass player wanted to have this set where we would have our mariachi song and then our ballad and then our disco song. And I'm like, you're an idiot. Knowing what I know now, what we should have done is mix them all together, have the mariachi chorus yep. with the disco right. verse and the death right. metal bridge. And then we would have had something right. instead of do, oh, us doing a mariachi version of Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, which I don't even know how that even happened. But anyway, we can go on and on <laughs> right. about nothing. Yeah, yeah. Right. Uh, we are here to talk about this week awesome soundtracks. And I'm just going to throw mine out there and we'll get to, you know, we haven't decided on, you know, our, our, our order. But my soundtrack this week is The Breakfast Club. Nice. Which, of course, I do have on vinyl. It's got some amazing new wave which uh my family and i have been listening to quite a bit of uh whoever wants to go first or whoever wants to go next go ahead well you already went first oh, uh, do we so we i think <laughs> what we were gonna do and i and i and we changed topics like last second so apologies to the audience watching and listening i think what nick and i had a semi agreed on we never really <laughs> focused on this stuff very well but it was a busy day we said we would talk yeah it's been a while couple of days but we said we would do a soundtrack that's like songs commercial songs and then maybe set throw out another one that's a score just to keep it interesting right uh, and if you have some yeah. honorable mentions do you want to pull this one off the shelf yeah you want to do like a round robin and do the commercial ones first and then come back around and do the score and any other discussion that yeah, comes i good. always like to let the guests go second uh just out of courtesy sure Yeah, um, like the one I picked is actually a combination of theme song, like a like a theme. And then there's uh, themes for each character and things like that. And then there is a score with like classical and choir, like all kinds of stuff like that. And mine is um, it's an anime series called Death Note. Quick question. How do we keep getting these anime guitar players? Oh my gosh! I don't. <laughs> you know the funny uh, because thing of you, is, is I'm Nick. Not like you <laughs> attract these people, and I mean it. If right? it sounds pejorative, it's these people. Fan. Right? Yeah. Right. I'm not even a big anime fan. Our That's last what's guest weird about was it. our last guest was Justin of Stormland, who writes uh-huh. death metal about Gundam. Wow, interesting. It's actually really good, and I hate Gundam. Yeah. <laughs> see i'm not even a huge anime fan like my wife's the one that got me into the, the death note she was watching it and i was like what's this the thing that caught me about it was the music i was like what is this you know and i heard the music on the tv and i was like the music's cool in it and so i started watching it but it, it's like this um mm, post rock if you want to call it that i don't even know i labels are stupid but i love um, post toasties music yeah i mean it's 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 that i mean there's not really lyrics on much of it but um but yeah it's got a lot of that going on and the the music's really well played and it's real catchy and i don't know i love it and it's like it's what really drew me into watching the 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 anime and it really was the music and i've never heard any music before or since on an anime i've watched that even touches it and um like i said they, the the classical and the choir stuff is actually really good too it's super spooky sounding like they, i have always they did felt, it right I, i've always felt that other nations do television better than we do because they put oh my they god far, yeah <laughs> far less episodes per season so they're whittling down they're self-editing right. one of my routine complaints in music is that 
an album should be no more than 45 minutes. You even be 45 or 65 plus. Nothing in the middle. Right. If you're at 50, you fucked up. And yeah, it gets weird. Well, I mean, when you get to 50, you're just filling it. You're just, you're just filling the record and you don't need right. to. I mean, uh, name one 55 minute record that you go, wow, I'm glad they did that. Right. Exactly. Yeah, not very See, many. Not no. very many. Robert Plant is the only person that can do a 60 minute record. But yeah. and that wasn't even Led Zeppelin. Right. I'm sticking, I'm sticking with it, Keefe. And <laughs> so that's, you know, but in, when, in, when you take that into television form, you know, when you're doing a 20 episode series before, and you already have that order before you've even written them, you're going to get a lot of crap television. Simpsons, I'm looking at you specifically. Yeah. And when you're yeah. only doing five and you work for a year on five, you're going to put a lot more care, a lot more craft. It is bespoke. Right. It is artisanal. It is avocado toast like a bitch. Right. I, I agree. I agree with that. Nobody's fighting yeah. me on this. This sucks. <laughs> I mean, no, I have no, I, I can't disagree with that assessment, sir. Uh, ironically, uh, yeah, ironically, um, for Nick's Breakfast Club, I literally just watched Dogma, and they have the whole diner scene where they talk about John Hughes movies. How did uh, you watch it? On YouTube, because it's not anywhere. So I saw okay, Clerks see, 3. I saw oh, we didn't Clerks talk about that. In the movie. Yeah, I saw, I, I skipped. Uh -huh. we, well, well, we skipped over my whole birthday, so I didn't even talk about it. I was like, I'm going to just skip it. It's over now. Uh, had we had our episode last week, I would have bullshitted on about turning 50 and all the things I did. Uh, Star Wars burlesque show and stuff like that. So um, I did I did have a good time and I did try to keep it in spirit and, and stay upbeat and positive. Uh, life is a dumpster fire inside of a dumpster fire inside of a dumpster fire at all times. But um, yeah, so I did, I my motorhead beer just exploded. So I'm now wiping it up with a another sock. one. Yeah. <laughs> I wondered I what was going on. <laughs> fantastic. I just want, well, yeah, um, um, Richie didn't, wasn't here for the intro. I have a terrible beer. I can't finish. Um, so it's like the first one that I, it's like, I, it's so disagreeable with me. I can't drink it. And I love the brand and every other beer they make just, I made a mistake with this one. Um, you, who knew? who knew I was going to totally not like this. No more hazies <laughs> and no more fruity beers for me, Nick. Um, but so I watched all the clerk. I got, I got a ticket to see clerks three in the small limited run that they had. And I watched all the Kevin Smith movies for like a week and dogma is not available anywhere because evil Harvey Weinstein will not give it back to Kevin Smith so he can do anything with it. Not even, I still have it on DVD. Show it. If you have it on DVD, you're lucky. You can't get it. You almost can't get it now. I only learned um, that like six months you ago. You can't get it. You can't rent it. You can't, it's not on streaming anywhere. All his other movies you can wow. find. Um, I had to rent Clerks 2 off of Amazon for four bucks. Worth it. Oh, uh, Watch it twice. Yeah, it's great. Watch it twice. The new one's great. That's all I'll say. But yeah, so Dogma has the famous diner scene at the beginning where they debate. They talk about the, the John Hughes movie. So Breakfast Club. Breakfast Club where all the dumb kids show up to actually show up to detention. Great. Um yeah, man. Uh, you know, anime has wonderful music, much like video games, very underrated. Uh, there's definitely a, a group of people who would put that music to the forefront of all their listening. I I have a friend who is a huge metal aficionado, but will say like a Final Fantasy soundtrack is the best music of all time. Hard to argue. I didn't even play <laughs> the game, but I've heard the music and it's great. Right. Uh, in, you know, I will quote Mega Ren. Video game music is music. Yeah, of course. Of course, it is. Uh, I used to love. I, uh, I thought like uh, I used to play Diablo and Diablo mm -hmm. Two. I can't play oh, yeah. like video games anymore because I'll just I'll never leave the house. I'll never accomplish anything. Me too. But, <laughs> yeah, I just can't. But I love Diablo and mm -hmm. Diablo Two. And Diablo Two has an incredible soundtrack, including like a recurring light motif that sounds like the Sleep by Pantera. That like acoustic part. That almost I gotta be like honest. A, I feel attacked. Oh yeah, magical. You guys are acting like I. You guys are acting like I spent four thousand hours in front of Final Fantasy Eleven. No, no, I mean, <laughs> might have because that's what it takes to be the game. Apparently, in Japanese, no. Yeah, oh, wow, well, go yeah. Ahead. Um, but anywho, yeah. So soundtracks, man. This, like the what's fun about this topic is you could go anywhere with this, which is why I had All to put right. like some qualifiers on it to give it a little more life. I was like, let's do like actual some. Like I like your choice. 
there, you know, Richie, because it's like it's a cool hybrid. It's out Doesn't of like mine. Mine is going to be very like boring and typical. Nick's is is not boring, but it's cool. And it's cool that he brought that one up. Um, and then again, like actual scores, movie scores, you know, actual orchestral uh, soundtracks. Um, I don't know why Nick is getting up for some reason during the podcast for Boten. Um, uh, Nick, man, grinding my gears really bad. Um, please don't do that. <laughs> Anyway, I'm going to scold Nick on air. That's right. Don't do that. I was yet. trying to be fast when I wasn't talking, so you wouldn't see no, me. No, no. You can't, you can't do that, bro. Uh, we're on all YouTube. All right, all right, all right. Little, yeah. Um, you bro broke my heart just a tiny little bit in that moment, bro. Uh, now I have to refocus and figure out what I was going to talk about, unless Richie has any more to add to his since we inter interjected there. Oh, no. No, no. I mean, um, oh, yeah. Actually, there's there's like two different um, seasons, I guess one season. There's a band called a Japanese band called nightmare that plays the beginning and end theme. And then in the next season, it's this band called maximum, the hormone. And of oh, course, you know, the I was hoping you were going to say maid cafe. Can't sound it. <laughs> and you can't understand a word. That, well, I can understand a few words, but, but anyway, just that soundtrack alone, just hearing those themes got me into those bands. And I started like buying all the shit from Japan and, you know, I just really got into that stuff. So, cause I, I was, a, I was clueless before that, you know, I had no idea about any of that kind of, of music from, you know, Japan. So at least not, not, not of that variety. So, and I was I just like, you were saying, Nick, like, I feel like the musicianship and the quality is just, it's a little higher, you know? I don't know what it is, but... One of the great things about anime is a season is 13 episodes. Mm -hmm. That's It's it. it anime right. comes in, in between four to six, 13, or and that 13 is a season. And I mean, an American television season is 25 episodes. And they right. crank those 25 episodes out in four months. Right, yeah, every week. I mean, that is that that's just factory bullshit for lack of a better term. Right. Mm -hmm. And that's why I think a lot of us I think that's a big part of why they are remaking all these English programs. Uh, speaking of remaking English programs, I don't know if any either of you watch Red Dwarf. I recently no. learned that there was a second American pilot for Red Dwarf. Hmm. Uh, Red Dwarf is imagine crossing Monty Python with Star Trek Voyager. Oh, okay, uh, I've heard how, of it, but I've never seen it. And the the second pilot had Terry Farrell, who a year later goes on to become Jadzia Dax in Star Trek. As oh the wow, cat. oh wow! And I went, wow. wow! This is the worst thing you've ever done. <laughs> That's so weird. It's so awful. <laughs> that's fucked up yeah that's that's a show that should not have been reattempted for america at all they tried it twice <laughs> it's too singular oh, a show it's a great show i recommend it but you should not it's, it's should not, not american it can't, can't be, it can't be it. americanized it can't be yeah the yeah. humor is too british it can't be correct right correct. uh so on that note i will go with my uh soundtrack a and then soundtrack b will be in a, a little bit later uh, you know, this is hard for me. I was born in the 70s, grew up in the 80s, came to life in the 90s, a real live boy. Me too. <laughs> and uh, I love a lot of movie soundtracks. There's a lot of great 80 ones. I was re I was watching, uh, you were talking about series and or just dropped the first three on Disney. I think it's three of 12. They're is it 12? Actually nice. Very long. See, like I think the just like you said about the album lengths, I think the season lengths, it's about the quality of the writing. If you don't have the quality of the storytelling, don't stretch six episodes into nine or eight. And if Only you do one. have if you have the opportunity, what could have been, you know, I don't know, if five or six hours of movies, you can make it into 12 episodes of a TV program. So that's cool. Correct. Um, in that same note, there's a lot of movie soundtracks. Like I remember, you know, I just binge watched all Cobra Kai. And like I graduated, this is how old I am officially. I on the day I graduated elementary school after the graduation, I went out for a meal and then I saw a karate kid in the theaters. 
which had like an incredible soundtrack for the time of pop music, right? I never right. saw pop any of the Karate music. Kids in the theaters. Yeah, oh, they're, yeah. they're, they're, they're now talking, the success the, of Cobra of Kai. Yeah, the success of Cobra Kai, they're talking about doing a new Karate Kid. Like a reboot. Yeah, without then, like a reboot. And you know what? Go to hell with Well, I mean, reboot. Pat Morita's passed yeah. on. And uh, right. maybe, yeah. maybe it'll have the Cobra Kai cast in a movie. That would be fun. But, no, they're um, talking about just, it's a whole new thing. All and, right, well. I didn't. I, had, I didn't hate the Hillary Swank one. I think, uh, if that's right. And I. No, no. What was it? Hillary Swank? No, whoever it is. Wait, Jackie Chan. Yeah, no, not Jackie Chan. That's Jaden Smith. No. There was a wait. Hillary Swank. What? There was another. There's like a fourth Karate Kid with Marita, where Hillary Swank is the student. Oh, I've not yes. seen that one. I guess I have not <laughs> seen that. But now Nick, I incredulous. remember. Incredulous. How could you? Yeah, that's an that's oh a whole God. thing. I'm not talking about <laughs> now. Jackie I remember. Chan. I remember he's not seeing... Japanese, by the way. No, he's not. He's Chinese. And yeah, that's fine. He's incredible. I love right. Jackie Chan. And but karate is Japanese. Rumble in the Bronx, shot in Vancouver. You know, <laughs> I love all his movies. <laughs> right. I remember anyway, the Pat Morita Hillary tr- Swank one though. Little China. Ah, <laughs> uh, when I was in San Francisco, I got Netflix pulled up, and I'm like, "Hey, who wants to watch Big Trouble in Little China?" And my whole family's like, who are you? And I'm like, oh, okay, I'm going to go to Chinatown. No. <laughs> yeah, I, um, That's so funny. I was just in Chinatown, actually. So hard to hard to narrow it down. But I got it down, you mm-hmm. know, like uh, I love the Lost Boys soundtrack. I have a patch on my vest for the Lost Boys because nice. of that soundtrack. I nice. have, I love Forrest Gump has one of the greatest rock soundtracks of it all time. It really does, really does. It we does. could do a whole episode Man. just on Forrest Gump. That's how great the movie. Right. We, need, we could do a series mm-hmm. on the Gump, and I'm and I'm here for it. We could. Uh, there's a bubble yeah. Gump shrimp here. Yeah, in me San too. Francisco. Yeah. But, I don't uh, need so that. I I got it down to three, and so from three I'll go to one. So you know, Judgment Night. For sure, uh, is yeah. one of yes. my favorites. Dude, and I then, love that. but I about picked that but, one. Yeah, but just right under it, I have I kind of landed on a tie, but I'm gonna say how I broke the tie. So the number two or one A is the crow. The crow is incredible. Oh yeah, oh, for yeah. a variety yeah. of reasons. Um, yeah. That the, the big empty by Stone Temple Pilots is their finest four minutes. That oh, mix yeah, of big empty. That's my favorite is, STP song. Yeah, mine exactly. too. <laughs> and uh, that mix of Big Empty is different than the one on the album. Really? So it's, that's I guess actually I didn't a very unique. That. Yeah, I've very never unique heard the album cut. version. Oh, I mean, you <laughs> probably have, because that was the version that was on radio. So you have heard the album version. That's the radio mm. one. The soundtrack one's got a actually slightly different mix and mm. um, maybe even a little different instrumentation. I when it was it. popular, I was driving a Ford Pinto and the speakers didn't even weren't even mounted. They were in the back seat. So I don't know that I would have heard <laughs> that nuance. Nice. Um, the re, the re, I don't want to say the reason Joy Division is popular now is because Nine Inch Nails covered it on the Crow soundtrack, but that's one of the reasons that literally resuscitated the brand of the band. Sure and don't into, hurt. Into, into, yeah. into the pop did, consciousness. Uh, the Cure sure. is on there. Pantera's on there covering Poison Idea. Like so yeah. many good. You know, uh, oh, I thought you were going to say great. Poison Just. No. I want to hear um, Pantera do. Ain't nothing but a good time. Oh God! No, <laughs> maybe maybe, back in maybe, in, maybe pre yeah maybe when Terry Glaze was singing for him. Well, even Phil on on the last Glam Terra album with Phil, but no oh, Nicholas, metal. no. <laughs> uh, I'm just I'm just doing this to Nick the whole episode. I'm just gonna wag my finger in Nick's direction. Not you, Richie. Not you, no. Richie. You're the good child, not you. Richie. I have <laughs> problems. You lot. <laughs> Uh, you have subscriptions, <laughs> not just issues. Anyway, oh. <laughs> uh, what I landed on for number one is singles. And I'll tell you why. Singles, the soundtrack to the movie, which just Ooh. celebrated, just celebrated. It's the movie turned 30. The movie's release was 30 years ago this week. So I was like, I'm going to just nudge singles ahead of the crow for this yeah. purpose. And I'll mm. tell you why. It is amazing it, it's it's actually so you know nirvana's already a thing cameron crow was already making this movie when nirvana happened uh they are the one band not on the soundtrack of that era weirdly um yeah. and, one of my favorite Jimi hendrix tunes is on there too there's Jimi Mid hendrix tune on there there's a zeppelin cover on there by heart at, known as the love mongers probably the best led zeppelin cover ever 
I oh, do yeah. not know that. Yeah, it's incredible. I think we've talked about it before and you were like, I don't know what you're talking about. And I was like, you will get to it someday. Here's that day. So, um, I mean, everybody, you know, Alice in Chains and Soundgarden and Pearl Jam are in the movie. The right. fictional al- the fictional tape from the band in the movie became songs by Chris Cornell and Alice in Chains, um, mm-hmm. including Seasons, which is the finest Chris Cornell anything probably. Uh, I love it so much. I miss Chris so much. So singles is really cute. I mean, Mother Love Bone, even like the right. replacements is not a grunge band, but you can see how the replacements totally yeah. inspired Pearl right. Jam and Nirvana. A lot. They were, Mud Honey. They were post third. They were post new wave pre grunge. Yeah, yeah, they were, sure. they were yeah. in there. They're I mean, kind of like know, the jangle between. pop. The yeah, jangle they, they, they were a new thing that nobody really knew. It didn't fit. It, it, they it didn't became, know what to do with them. Yeah. Yeah. right exactly kind of like king's oh. x or something yeah so i love i love those three but also i'm gonna say like yeah singles stands out to me as the best the soundtrack actually because nirvana was already happening they pushed the soundtrack out three months before the film came out so that's like a people don't remember yeah. now so the, the soundtrack came out the end of june 92 and the mm-hmm. movie released september 18th 92 so yeah just real, just, i remember I, I bought the soundtrack before the movie came out yeah we all yeah so yeah i do i do remember that yeah so i didn't because yeah. i didn't have any damn money but yeah i get it i get it, it. That, if you think about that soundtrack though there are so many seminal underground and seminal above ground bands that, that's such an amazing <laughs> it, it's such an amazing it's, it's an eye of the storm a, a meeting of everything that that's really cool i would ask one all question right. Now, and I'll, I'll ask the question, then I'll answer it myself, and I'll, I'll open it up to the floor. What made you choose the album you did? I chose The Breakfast Club because that soundtrack is not just the music from the film, but it reminds me of the film. I cannot hear Don't You Forget About Me without picturing John Bender raising his fist to the air, walking across the football field. Mm. Yeah, for sure. That's a good point. I mean, for me, you know, I thought she has been this. way more complimentary of me today, today than, <laughs> than Keithy. I'm just going to throw that out there. <laughs> I mean, for me, honestly, the way I approached it was what set, what soundtrack has like, I guess the whole Death Note thing, it was like, it really, it made me want to watch this, the show. Like that was the thing that got my attention was the music. And I've never had a soundtrack do that. Or I've never, let's, let's put it this way. I've never been privy to like watching a, a movie or a show just for, you know, the music's not what got me into it. That's like, that never happens. And it's usually because of the hype around it or whatever it is and or i'm into star wars whatever and for this it was yeah i was the music really caught my ear and turned me into a fan of the series so it was i've never had that happen before or since so I that, think that's a that's pretty that's much a, the main reason why i chose it that, that's a really cool thing it's also worth noting and we've discussed this on the podcast before that there was a time uh, in this world when you couldn't watch your favorite movie at home unless your local independent network just happened to show it. Like I didn't right. see, you know, the first time I ever saw Slapshot was when I was studying for my first round of finals in the history of my life because it was on channel 11. And I'm like, well, I should be studying, but that could be about hockey. So I watched it. It's a fine. I passed, but I could have passed better if I hadn't watched that amazing, <laughs> terrible long yeah. movie. But yeah, there was a time, you know, I have Monty Python's Life of Brian soundtrack, which, mm. you know, half of it is new stuff they made up. Half of it is scenes from the movie. But there was a time mm. in this country and in this world where home entertainment was only on these wonderful black discs that. Right. Keefe and I uh, aggrandize on a weekly basis. And so when yeah. people talk about how the death of the music industry it's really worth noting as we're talking about movies, as we're talking about streaming DVDs and video games, just as a sides, there was a time in this yeah. world in our lifetimes 
No, oh, yeah. none of those things were even a thing. You had to go to see a movie. You had to go right. to play a video game. Now, right. it's all just, yeah, yeah. I mean, I got PSO two for free this week because they they believe that I'll pay them to buy money. Huh. Good luck, fuckers. Right? Yeah. <laughs> Ah, sorry, Keefe, please. Oh, I was just going to say that, uh, you know, all those movies I mentioned, especially singles, just takes me back to a happier time in my life, community college, when everything was in front of me, and uh, I didn't feel like death every single day. So that's fabulous and morbid. Um, but anyway, yeah. Just <laughs> well, happy, I'm just going to say, I'm just, I'm just going to quote Avenue Q. Why don't we go back to college? Why and you know what? It was hard for well, me not to pick that one. That was very, and it was also almost up on the wall behind me this week. Nice. Mm. I work at a college, to be fair. I keep telling myself, you should go back for that Master of Fine Arts. That'll help you sell shit. That won't oh, be yeah. a waste of money. All right. Yeah. Your, yeah. your dissertation could be on, on records and vinyl. Um, I would read that. <laughs> I would listen so, to that. Yeah. So <laughs> let, let's, let's kick it this way. For a second, just strictly movie scores. See, and, that, and I apologize. That's why I was getting up. I was going to change my mind and reach <sighs> over and snatch my Star Wars soundtrack. Uh, you can you can claim Star Wars. I went in a I went in a, I went in <laughs> no, a direction. I'll let, I'll let Richie have Star Wars. We, we've fine. seen all right. we've seen all of Nick's Star Wars vinyls on the show before. I only have two. We've seen them before. <laughs> okay, fair. And I wanted to go personally and direct and you know not repeat my own steps. You can do whatever you want, pal. But I'm gonna like not, not repeat myself. I was gonna let you have Star Wars or you have Star Wars if you want, Rich. Everybody knows Star Wars is like my thing. I love Star Wars. Before it was everywhere, right. I was like obsessed right, yeah. about Star Wars from 76 to now. I've been Empire like Strikes Wars. Back was the yeah. first movie I remember I seeing. Yes, me too. I, me too. I, yeah, I saw Star Wars in the theater. I talked the entire time. My dad was like, "Fucking should have pulled out the whole time." Um, <laughs> I remember. I remember asking my mother six months later, "Do you remember when the Millennium Falcon left the asteroid and the worm tried to eat it?" And she just looked at me like, "No, I'm an adult." That's not what she said, but I'm sure it's what she was thinking. I definitely ruined Star Wars for my dad. But and it's what he, fucking amazing, Mom. He went back the next day. He went back after taking me as a four-year-old. He went back the next day by himself to rewatch it, right? And then told amazing. me he did. He was like, guess what I just did? <laughs> I was like, what? I just came from the movies. I saw Star Wars again. And I was like, why? He's like, because you talked the whole time. And I had to go watch it again. I was like, we were broke. I don't even... Like, I don't know, a movie was like two bucks Holy. back then. But like we you, went to, we went to the dollar show. So I probably saw right. you know Empire, which came out in 79 and 80. So or yeah, yeah, 80, yeah. In 80 or 81. But you know, right. I'm not gonna do Star Wars. I was just gonna grab that record for a flex because I have low self-esteem. But my choice <laughs> this week, my choice for the, the orchestral theme is my re-release of my neighbor Totoro. And I am oh animated. man, that that show is so awesome. I love Totoro Totoro. And if you pay attention to my Instagram, uh, if you look at the, the records I post on Instagram, I have six soot balls sitting on my turntable mm -hmm. that are around the record. That is what that is the first anime movie that my kid really got into with me. Really. And nice that's awesome so it's it's not my favorite of the studio ghibli my favorite is spirited away mm -hmm. which is it's it's something i watch on father's day most years <coughs> because there's a big you know father daughter kind of thing which you know awesome. I my daughter would save me if i get captured by a witch because i pigged out on Jap tasty japanese food which would happen if i showed which up would happen uh, would happen yeah. totally would happen look at that mustard yeah. the soy sauce i will eat this now i'm a pig hope the kid saves me but right this one i saw it and i love as i've mentioned many times on this podcast i love japanese pressings of vinyl you know as we talked about the for the the you know the other countries doing greater craft on things america is mm -hmm. so big that we lose a lot of artisanal avocado toast 
bespoke qualities that the other mm. countries have. One of the reasons right. why Japanese vinyl is so much better is because their batches are so much smaller. Even right. in the 70s and 80s, they were only doing two or 3,000, where in mm. America, we had to have seven pressing plants running yeah. things on the dark side of the moon. Right. So you know, Hundreds of thousands of. Correct. And he, so be, the belief is because there's so much smaller pressings, the plates aren't getting ruined as fast. I don't know if I mean, it's true, but yeah. in my brain, they sound better. Maybe I'm justifying the extra cost, possible, <laughs> right. likely even, but in my world, in my, my brain, they sound better. And this one, right. I didn't think I was ever going to be able to own it. It was re-released in 2021. It came out at you know $50 minimum. Uh, I spent far more on this than I ever would on a soundtrack. I got lucky. I came into some money. I hit a button at a casino. Woohoo! And then I grabbed my phone Yay. and it's more... Grab my phone, hit some more buttons, and that money was gone. But it's fine. Yeah. Now I have this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Nice. I love that story. I like that a lot. And yeah, I I think I I could agree with you on that. I have some Japanese pressings of vinyl, and they do seem like smoother. I guess I, don't, I, I don't have know what it is. Decided that I'm replacing every Pink Floyd record I have. With Japanese, with Japanese pressings, pressings. <laughs> except for the ones, except for the ones that I already have on Japanese yeah. pressings, I have four. Oh, okay, nice, nice. I have four yeah. of the records that you don't want, but I have four. <laughs> right, okay. We'll leave it at that. As so about... Richie, uh, uh, did you have a, another pick beside your other pick that also qualified for this question too? But if you <laughs> want to pick one more, you can. Um, uh, man, I mean, it's hard not to pick Star Wars, but uh, one of the things that's great about Star Wars, and that is an amazing pick, and I'm gonna assume you picked it because I want to tell this story. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I on my birthday 2019, I believe it was. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we went to the we went to the John Williams night at the St. Louis Symphony Orchestra. Of course, the oh, 501st, wow. the local 501st Legion was there. A uh, good friend of the show, Danny Nichols, is uh -huh. in the 501st. He wasn't, I don't believe he was at that, but he now goes mm -hmm. to all their, their business. So okay. that was a cool you know, <clears throat> birthday day. Hearing, nice. you know, St. Louis Symphony Orchestra is one of the oldest orchestras in the country. Oh, wow. And hearing them and hearing that played orchestrally was just. Oh, I can only imagine. I mean, because you have so many memories attached to those particular arrangements of notes. And, you know, it's like your whole life almost flashes before your eyes when you hear that kind of stuff. It's and like, oh, my when, God, I'm seven again. Yeah, right. And, and, and hearing it in that setting, it's all encompassing. And, you know, you're just surrounded by the sound. And I just I've never been to a symphony. And I had so. a twenty one dollar uh, porterhouse dinner right before it treat yourself it's now 24 prices have gone up <laughs> i mean yeah star wars was a huge huge um i mean it's just it's iconic you can't deny it um lord of and the i Rings hate that i hate that word i hate I the know. word iconic but yeah. you know what it is i mean that it is, is that is the you know movie cinematic franchise for sci-fi right. Mm. You know, Star Trek is, you know, regardless of what amazing movies there have been in Star Trek, regardless of other franchises, Close Encounters, Alien, 2001 right. and 10, yeah. everyone has seen Star Wars. Yeah. Whether they wanted to or not. Star, to Wars or not. Used to, <laughs> Star Wars used to be a tradition on USA right. before the prequels back in the 90s. And that mm. was the only before... We all had even VCRs and we could afford right. to buy these things. I remember my friend mm. Josh had the, he had the trilogy and I'm like, oh my God, you have it. Right. <laughs> the second version yeah. of the trilogy, I might have the THX version, but right. on, I, I remember it on, I, have that. Uh, <laughs> I do too. I got it. Later. <laughs> I mean, I didn't have it contemporarily, yeah. but I remember, you know, Thanksgiving and Christmas that USA would play all three mm. in a row. And that is the, oh, yeah. you know, those were the only before even a Christmas story was a tradition. Star oh, Wars yeah. was a tradition. Yep. 
Oh yeah, every year my parents they'd they'd queue it up, man. They'd turn on USA and yeah, we'd watch it every fucking year, man. <laughs> I will shut up and I will turn the floor over to Keithy. What do you got for us? Oh, I think uh, Richie was also going to say something about. Oh, Lord I'm sorry, Rings, but Nick. Oh no! Oh yeah, we yeah, got no, no Lord of the Rings. Yeah, I mean, and uh, so with Howard Shore, um, like I was not even familiar too much with him and um lord of the rings was just something that i mean it just blew me away um i know there's it's going off the tolkien books and i've read them many several times and you know there's some bitches and complaints about not having tom bombadil and all that and you know i i get it um i do prefer to watch lord of the rings if i'm going to watch them the director's cuts you know of course the 18 hour but, um, versions of the four hour yeah. movie oh my god right yeah <laughs> right yeah my yeah. wife is yeah. as my wife made me watch these fucking movies these fucking yeah. hobbit walking movies in 2009 she promised me i will watch samurai flicks not only have i seen every fucking lord of the rings movie every fucking hobbit movie and i'm watching this goddamn lord of the rings walking around tv show that takes 90 minutes a week you know how many samurai Rings movies this woman is? Yes. You know how many samurai movies this <laughs> okay. woman has watched in watch fourteen those. years? Zero. Zero. <laughs> she says to me three years ago, "I watched Last Samurai." Doesn't that count? I didn't know you then. I have purchased samurai movies in the time we've been together, and you didn't watch them. Last Samurai does not count as a fucking Samurai movie. Yeah, I disagree. Kind of, kind of a divorce. No, I disagree. I was, it no, is a really horrific. You whitewashing of the Satsuma Rebellion. I know. But it's fun to watch. Fucking Tom Cruise running. That's I know. A, I so know. if you don't like the Hobbit movies for too much walking, I don't like any Tom Cruise movie for too much running. But anyway, <laughs> hey, um, totally fine. I will I will say that fan yeah, I, 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 I did just watch all <laughs> I did just watch all three Lord of the Rings extended cut versions before Holy the God. Rings of Power show came on. The Hobbit movies are an abortion. They're terrible. They're um, not. They're better. They fight. They do things more than walking. But mm, so, oh, my God. If anybody put in one of those 17-hour movies of the Lord of the Rings, you would never see me again. I would take a dive off the fucking arch. <laughs> I like it. The arch is neat. It's tall. And you know what? I'm going to make a splat. Did you, did you drop a stat a couple of weeks, a couple of episodes ago? We'll say a couple of weeks ago in our time. How many people die a year trying to jump off that thing? <laughs> no, I, I'll tell you this much. There, Serious? If you, <laughs> there are photos, and I will start. Po- I would post them if they didn't terrify the shit out of me, of people mopping that some bitch before it was dedicated. Holy no shit. fall protection. <laughs> yeah, just Jeez. a bucket <laughs> and a mop. Every time oh I look God. at that picture, I'm like, what is no the fuck, man? <laughs> and then they show, then there's another picture of the mayor and other dudes in a cable car putting a flag on. And I'm like, no, I no, no, <laughs> I wouldn't enough. even do that. Yeah, but no, nine. dudes have jumped off that some bitch like base jumping. And I'm like, mm, mm. I like Bungie living jump. more. I mean, I'm scared mm. to die. <laughs> The the yeah, basic that, human instinct is not to try to die. So, so like, yeah, yeah, I mean, yeah. <laughs> fucking and right. the basic human instinct is to try to not stand on the fucking thing that blows in the wind when you're on right. top of it while you're mopping it. Yeah. Right. It's like eight, it's, it's oh, not even one... eight feet wide. Oh. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty, it's narrow. Now I have one more thing about oh, do it. um God got Godzilla. Godzilla soundtracks, which were amazing. Well, the original, like from the, the first. Yeah, dude. Like Grave Huffer. Like when we play, I think the we're gonna our our coming out music when we come out on stage is gonna be the Godzilla theme. No, it should be the Cosmos singing Mahara. <laughs> <laughs> but as we all know. Batra is the winner, right? I mean, except, dude, in every, except in every movie he was featured in, yeah, right, where he right. gets killed. Yeah, uh, that is actually my online handle in everything. If you see an online game, there's a dude named Batra. Yo, nice man, that's awesome. Yeah, our bass player Mike in particular is huge in the Godzilla, and um, and oh, Gustav Holt, the planets, 
that's another like you can tell John Williams was really influenced by him. Uh, just for real quick, I have an honorable mention. Yeah. Uh, straight out of Compton for the commercial. Yeah. And, you know, Dude. the one thing I hate about yes. this, this set is it's terribly pressed. It is one of the worst vinyl pressings of anything I've ever owned. Lots of sibilance. Ah, it, sounds, it, it is what Weird. it is. But I also hate the fact that there's no original members uh, printed on it. But it is an amazing hmm. late 90, late 80s, early 90s gangster rap starter kit. Because it's got Snoop. It's oh, yeah, for Dre, sure. It's got Easy. It's got NWA. Even it's got a few Parliament tunes. So that's great. But that's um, cool. Keefe, uh, hit us with your last one. Yeah. Trying yeah. To, I, I'm, this is one of the most fun podcasts we've ever done. And nice. we will go all day if we don't uh, maintain. Order. Yes. So I'll, I'll, I'll keep it short. <clears throat> uh, this also could have been a many, many things. I love John Williams so much. I always talk about the first vinyl I ever bought being uh, Kiss Rock and Roll Over. The second vinyl I ever bought with my own money was the Superman original soundtrack, oh, also I, by John Williams with the, yes. I, I won't say the I word, but it's <clears throat> fantastic theme music for Superman, who has had many mm -hmm. great theme songs. I know Spider-Man tends to come to mind and Batman comes to mind for superhero music, but actually the super Superman movie soundtrack is amazing, but that's not my pick. I'm going to pick The Dark Knight because Hans Zimmer is the shit. Hans um, Zimmer is the shit. And maybe for I an feel like we got Rick rolled there. Yes, <laughs> uh, I went. I went back, and I'm really a Marvel guy, I, I not a DC guy. I agree with guy. Nick a little bit there. I, I'm I think really I agree a, with Nick. It's all good. Not DC, but I do love. I do actually think my two favorite superhero movies ever are Watchmen and The Dark Knight in that order. Oh, but, dude! They actually made that. a joke about that in Welcome to Wrexham. Ryan, Re the, the lady's talking in Welsh. She goes, "Did you say DC? I don't know what you're talking about. I'm more of a Marvel guy myself." Wah, wah. Um, and then, <laughs> yeah. and then I think my honorable mention because also I'm a weird jazz prog nerd um, from my you know beyond even my musicology days, but because I'm such a Scorsese file and I love Taxi Driver so much, Bernard Herman's mm -hmm. soundtrack to Taxi Driver yeah. is like a tour de force jazz. It soundtrack. is man. It is incredible. Dude. It is really good. You know, oh, I have wow. still Bernard not Herman, seen that movie. Yeah, Bernard Herman, wow. Twilight Zone, Bernard Herman. Uh, oh, fuck yeah, dude. His, his, Bernard Herman was involved with Star Trek music, although not the theme song. So like, mm -hmm. anywho, yeah, that's, yeah, that, you know, this, this is a fun topic. It could go in a lot of ways. Right. Uh, yeah. Lots and lots of ways. But yeah, this great contributions. Um, yeah, um, so I know you just turned your record in, Richie. Do you have anything else you want to plug as we wind this down? Well, um, I'd say as far as big news is uh, we're playing this Tennessee Metal Devastation Fest in October. I love the idea of a metal fest in Tennessee. Yeah, dude. And like there's like this whole satanic panic about the local community wanting to shut it down. And like, Oh my God, that's awesome. Oh yeah. They're going to, they're going to, they're going to, they're trying, they're talking about like pulling the pl power to the festival and all this crazy. Oh, gonna, gonna go American forest. Oh yeah, here. dude. My freedoms, oh, yeah. my freedoms, my freedoms, yeah. but all this oh, anti-American stuff. And, and yeah, I've been following this story uh, because my homies in Casket Robbery are also playing. Oh, fuck yeah. And uh, yeah. we're putting out their new video tomorrow on Ghost Cult, oh, nice. actually. But this will be yeah. later. Anyhow, yeah. Uh, but yeah, just, um, yeah, the the Bruja is real. I was like, is this a publicity stunt? No, it's real. And oh, then yeah. there are even within their community, some of there are people like, yeah, I totally disagree with the idea of this fest. But if the city already issued them the permit, Right. We can't shut it down because we don't agree with what they're going to do. We just like we already got the money. So right. it's it's I hope it I hope it actually happens. And, um, mm. uh, you know, good luck. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus. In this day and age, we have so much stuff to be upset about. I'll, a, I'll say this. Humanity. Get paid up front. Get paid for you get in the van. Right. Well, we did. We They did buy our hotels. So we're, we're good. We're well, you know what? If nothing else. <laughs> nothing else go to the hotel pee out the window right <laughs> yeah throw some tvs out you know <laughs> axel rose that shit right guns and roses that hotel room no you don't want to do that but like 
<laughs> I do, but he doesn't. I, yeah, you don't really want. Like I, I think on some paper, it sounds like a good idea. It's like the Selena right. movie when Chris, when Chris and his band do it, it feels good in the moment, and then you're like, oh, what did we just do? Um, it'll feel, it'll right. feel great right out of the moment until splut on a human. Well, that too. But, yeah, uh, there's no deposit for that one. It's it's right. wild that that's a thing. Like in this day and age, that <laughs> oh a, yeah, seriously. a town is like you cannot go you cannot listen you can do other things that day you can go for a drive you the town needed the money clearly and issued the permit and knew what it was right. for saw the name mm -hmm. here's the organization here's the guy who's in charge of it who you know is you know wasn't hiding who he was believe right. me like there's a lot of stuff uh i'm from new york city originally i live in california now there's a whole thing where like the hardcore guys will get a permit for a fair for an arts and crafts fair and then put on a hardcore concert in the park. Right. That's yeah. some bullshit. Even though I love some of those bands, that's some straight up bullshit right. deceiving right. the city on purpose to get away with a thing. And then the city's right. like, whatever, we're not going to police this shit. We had too good, too much yeah. other problems in, in New York to police this BS, but like Tennessee, I'm sure this small town needs the money, right? They need the, they need right. the income. They need, they have vendors. They have local people who are going to come and make money oh, yeah, dude. off of the thing, food trucks and oh, yeah. people to serve beer oh, and yeah. security. Mm -hmm. Like y'all need the infrastructure. Yep. You need the help. Like you need right, money. Exactly. It's not, yeah. it's not going to be a Woodstock or, or a fire fest. Calm down. Right. Uh, yeah. You know, and really well, none of these bands are that satanic. Like it's more like you yeah. have some some horrific death metal bands that are like into horror more than Satanists. A great, yeah, I mean, yeah, a great no, death metal really festival is going to get what four thousand people, like Amazing. a big one. Yeah, 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 a big one. Yeah, I mean, I'm, look, I, look, it's like, it's like Carcass, man. I love Carcass, right? Oh, I've seen them twice. They had mm. five hundred people in attendance. This is one of the biggest death metal bands. The oh, dude, songs. yeah, yeah, five hundred people, maybe. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. So it's, yeah, it's, it's, it's crazy. not that it's not that crazy, really. There's not that many yeah. of us. Yeah. Yeah, it's just the nature of it, you know. Well, best of luck. I'm glad you're doing it. Thanks, man. Uh, we'll keep yeah. trying to promote it. I know it's coming up not too far in advance from here. A yeah, few weeks, I think, after this two airs. and a half weeks. Yeah. Yeah. So mm -hmm. right yep. after this airs, we'll try to promote it. And uh, yeah, man, thanks for being here. Hope you you enjoyed yourself. Thank and, you. And we enjoyed you. I can speak yes. to Nick and say we enjoyed your your feedback oh, yeah, and man. your presence here today. And thank uh, you. it was a blast. Yeah, thank you. Unless Nick has something else to say, I will take us home. I always well. have things to say, but I will not now. <laughs> <laughs> All righty then. <laughs> this has been. The Glacially Musical Podcast. I am Keefe. You can find me at all the things at Ghost Cult Mag and at Ghost Cult Keefe. Richie here is from Grave Huffer. We're going to link all his stuff in the description. Probably. Sometimes we don't, but we're going to try this time. Nick, you know where to find him. Glacially Musical, Instagram, Facebook, Nick on Twitter. All the things. Thanks for being here. If you like what you heard today, please rate us five stars on Apple or spotify it does help we appreciate it if you didn't like what you heard today talk some shit online we welcome it yes one, once tag again me and tag me because i tag us and give talk shit it's fine it's fine yes we can, we i got take it. i got i got problems i will i will respond i got 99 problems and a tweet ain't one That's this right. has been the glacially <laughs> musical podcast it does not play in peoria but peoria is the home of comedian richard pryor Yay. Really? <laughs>